Hi, today's topic is, do you have any slides? So my name is Joel King. I'm a distinguished solutions architect at Worldwide Technology. I'm focused on software-defined networking and network programmability. I've also been a network architect for a number of years. And more recently, I've been hosting and organizing a meetup that uh, anyone can free to join, an RTP programmability and network automation meetup group that we hold uh, sessions on a regular basis. So today's topic or today's problem statement or pain point has to do with the number of presentations, PowerPoint presentations that I have on my laptop. So over the years I've presented at DevNet Create, uh, participated in DevNet Create, also have uh, presented at Ansible Fest, F5 Agility, our Ansible Dorm meetups, Cisco Live, a um, number of different sessions. We have also do virtual team meetings, both in the virtual environment and on site. And from that, I have thousands of slides on my laptop. And very frequently, my coworkers will say, well, do you have the slide that shows this? Or do you have that presentation? And the problem is, is that it takes a long time to go through all of these slides and determine what's the relevant PowerPoint presentation that my coworker needs for their use case or their customer presentation. Now you could use a find command and you could find all the PowerPoint slides on your laptop, but it still takes a, a long time to be able to look at it and make sure that we have the right presentation and the, light and the correct slide for that ask. So our objective today is to understand a solution of how we could address this problem. We want to look at the value of object storage and how object storage in either a public or private cloud environment can help us with addressing this particular problem. And then we're going to look at uh, AI or machine learning type concept called natural language processing and how that ties into identifying the relevancy of a different of these different presentations. We'll leverage tags and metadata to search and retrieve objects. And then most importantly, we're going to use code to do something that eliminates some toil in our day to day activities. And the overall theme of this is to be curious. So there is a, a, a commercial on television now that talks about four things, family values, hard work, be kind to people, and uh, be honest. And the fourth value is to be curious. And throughout this project, while this isn't specifically a network automation use case, many of the concepts and objectives that we're going to talk about today could at some point in the future be associated with network or infrastructure automation. So our components that we're going to use are a number of public source uh, live Python libraries, um, Python PPTX, which manipulates PowerPoint files. We'll use a rake algorithm to be able to extract keywords from the data in those files. And then in order to do string matching, we use a Python utility called Fuzzy Wuzzy. The core of all this is some code that I've written that use, calls these libraries or these utilities, but more importantly, the Minio Python API. So Minio is a high performance object storage uh, open source solution. It can interface with Amazon S3 through the HTTP API. And it can also retrieve tags and metadata around objects that are stored in object storage and also in a private cloud environment. So we're going to pull a open source in the cloud environment and Python code that I've written together to solve this problem that I have in finding, searching, retrieving, and sharing PowerPoint presentations. So we have first have to understand what PowerPoint really is. So if you take a PowerPoint presentation, the more modern format, the PPTX format, and unzip that file, you'll notice that it is a compressed or zipped file it has a number of files and directories when you unzip it. The Python PPTX library provides the ability to either update or, in our case, extract data out of these files. So in the directory docprops, 
there is a core XML file. So we have structured data within PowerPoint and we have key value pairs in that structured data. So we're going to use this Python PPTX utility to be able to glean information out of those PowerPoint presentations in order to populate our tags and metadata. And that looks a little, a little like this. So this is an example, slide nine, of a presentation that was done in 2018 for our internal VT on blockchain and Bitcoin. And we'll see that in this little code snippet, we call my uh, Python class, which in turn calls the PPTX utility, give it the name of a PowerPoint file. We extract the text out of all of the slides in that file. So in this example, this is slide nine. We can see that there's a title, successful Bitcoin hashes, and then column headers, some cut and paste data, and then some bullet items at the bottom. So what we end up with this utility is, is a, a string of, uh, or a, a list of strings, which contains all of that text from that particular file. So there's some information in there that's important to us, and there's some information that isn't particularly important to us. And that takes us into the next aspect, what I call winnowing or separating the chaff from the, from the wheat. We're gonna extract keywords out of that text for each one of these slides. And we'll use an algorithm called the rapid automatic keyword extraction algorithm. So what this algorithm does is, is we feed into it some text to process. And it also has as input a string of punctuation and also stop words. And these can be user defined. And our goal in all of this is to, at running it through this algorithm, is to be able to take that raw text from the PowerPoint presentation and run it through a function to get ranked phrases. And what these ranked phrases will provide for us is the ability to be more relevant in our searching and grouping of these presentations according to their specific topic or the keywords that are in that presentation. So the concept of rake or rapid automatic keyword extraction analyzes text for the frequency and the co-occurrence with other words in text. So our idea is to get high value text out of this algorithm. So I'll give you a little anecdote. When I, I worked with a coworker a few years ago, all of our documents, engineering documents, were in a system called EDCS, or Electronic Document Control System. And he would search by putting in the letter A and then sorting based on the, the date and time. So he would get the most relevant all of the documents, but the most relevant ones in date and time, because most all presentations contain, or documents contain the letter A. So it was a way for him to find everything in the universe in this system. We wanna do the exact opposite. We don't wanna find, when we search, we don't wanna find everything. We wanna find very specific documents based on the text in this metadata so that we can uh, provide just a small answer set that has a very high relevance to our target audience. So in this case, this is an example of the rake algorithm. So you may all be familiar with the Alice in Wonderland. And this is a paragraph from Alice in Wonderland. In this code snippet, I set one of the paragraphs to the variable Alice, and I import the rake algorithm, and I run the method to extract keywords from the text of the variable Alice. And returning is the first 10 phrases that are ranked based on order of relevance. So in this case, you'll see I've highlighted the text. Little three-legged, solid glass, might belong, second time around, low curtain, little door, 15 inches high, all of these all of these phrases or keywords are what the algorithm determined as being the most relevant based on the context with each other in the paragraph, but also the, the value of these keywords. And you'll notice that we didn't highlight things like or, the, was, any, at. These are low value keywords. So in this case, we're retrieving the high value keywords 
And later we will associate those keywords with the metadata for the presentations that we load into our object store. PowerPoint also has the concept of some inherent metadata. So because PowerPoint files are structured data, there is a user managed metadata in the terms of core properties that are key valued pairs. Most people don't populate these fields, but it's probably a very good practice in this case to get into because that gives us very user defined relevant data. And we're gonna pull that information using the Python PPTX utility out of those Python files. We also have the ability to define some custom pro properties, but the library doesn't return those. And then we can also save, you see that there's a checkbox there to, to save a preview or a thumbnail with it. So PowerPoint has these, the ability to allow the user to find metadata too, which will enable us to search more effectively through the presentation. The key to all of this is object storage. So you might be familiar with object storage in things like Dropbox, Box, uh, photo sharing sites, any sort of audio site files, massive amounts of unstructured data. It's very common in the cloud environment today. Each one of these objects is, is referenced globally by a URL, globally unique ID. And the metadata and tags that we're going to populate are associated with these particular objects. And we're going to use Minio, in this case, the Python client API to interface with Amazon S3, but Minio can also run in a private cloud environment using the Minio server side of the equation so that you can use this both in a public or private cloud environment to store these objects for later retrieval, uh, search, and then sharing. So this is an example of the Minio Python SDK. We have to provide some security credentials when we instantiate the object. We're gonna go through all of the thousand PowerPoint files that I have on my laptop, extract out that metadata, run it through the rake algorithm, find the most relevant keywords, populate that metadata, include tags that we are user defined to associate it with it, and then put each one of those PowerPoint objects into that cloud storage. So that gives us the ability to provide an object store and tags and metadata that are associated with that particular object for later retrieval and sharing with our broader team. This is what the user interface looks like in Amazon S3. You can see the tags are identified, key value pairs. We have our core properties, the subject, when it was modified, the author, the keywords and title, and then also these rate keywords. In this case, we have a, a, a key of rate keywords, and we see that we have WWT, digital platform, communities. These are all keywords that we feel are relevant to describe this particular object. And then we can also associate tags with a group of objects, in this case, topic DevNet create, and the audience is external. So now that we have this information, we've got all of our objects in our cloud. And you'll see that each one of those have a name in the bucket. And we can also do some rudimentary searches through the graphical interface of, of AWS to be able to search for all of the PowerPoint presentations that start with automation. But we've stored it, we can retrieve it now. So in this case, and this is really the key to the whole, to the whole exercise, is searching and sharing. So in this example, I have another utility, a query utility, that uses a string input, in this case, template, and I'm gonna retrieve a depth of 10 or 10 objects. So in running this utility, we query all of the objects in that particular object store bucket. We retrieve the metadata about each of those objects, not returning the object, just the metadata, run it through another Python method to do the credibility of matching to our search string, and then the output of that utility is going to give us a credibility score, the metadata, and a download URL. So in this case, I searched for template, and we came back the most credible result, the first result, 
was the DevNet Create PowerPoint template from 2019. So I can take that URL, that pre-signed URL, which is time-bounded as a start and an end time, and share that with my broader team, either through Slack, WebEx Teams, Microsoft Teams, email, any sort of chat utility, send that URL to, the, to the, my teammate that wants that presentation, and then they will be able to download that presentation and share it amongst them and use it in their in their day to day work. So with all of that, we learned a couple of things here today. We understood the value of object store and how pervasive object store is in our modern cloud based infrastructures. We also looked at how we can take open source software, in this case, Minio, to be able to enable accessing cloud-based resources, either external cloud, public cloud, or private cloud. And we've looked how we've a, a taken a component of machine learning and AI, in this case, natural language processing, to be able to extract the high value information to populate our metadata, and then provided a useful utility for me to be able to be more efficient in inventorying and categorizing these presentations and then sharing them with the broader team. So thank you very much today for your attention and have a great DevNet Create.